Hello everyone. As the world fights COVID-19, we are now staring at another challenge, the rising biomedical waste. In this video, let us understand what is biomedical waste, how is it determined and how it has to be disposed. Let's look at how big the problem is and right disposal procedure to reduce pollution and also risk of infection from contaminated waste. So, let's get started. What is biomedical waste? Biomedical waste or laboratory waste is uh, the waste that contains potentially infectious materials. It includes waste such as packaging, bandages, masks, gloves, um, infusion kits, etc. As well as laboratory waste that contains biomolecules or even organisms that are really very hazardous when released to the environment. Now let us see how the biomedical waste is collected, disposed and managed. Basically biomedical waste is of two types which is number one hazardous and the other is non-hazardous. Hazardous waste is 15% of the waste which is very radioactive and toxic. The non-hazardous waste is 85% of the hospital waste which is a general waste. If we talk about sources of biomedical waste through which we collect the biomedical waste, in major we have this hospitals, laboratories, research centers, nursing homes, blood banks, autopsy centers and mortuaries and also immunization sites. So these are the major sources through which we collect the biomedical waste. And then there are these minor sources such as school first aids and home care, paramedics and clinics etc. There are certain steps to manage biomedical waste to, to save people and environment from infections. First, we need to segregate, segregate the biomedical waste, which is segregation, and then we have to collect and store it apart, and then packaging, which is which has to be done very strictly, and then transportation of this biomedical waste to certain place, and treatment of biomedical waste, and then we have disposal of biomedical waste, and finally to maintain records of all these processes. Firstly, to segregate biomedical waste, there is a rule of color coding with five color bags or bins provided like yellow, red, blue, white and black. So now first, let's talk about yellow bag. Yellow bag is used for microbiological waste or anatomical waste in OTs, operation theaters like when they remove placenta or appendix or even gallbladder or anything that comes from uh, especially operation theater. Also cottons, cloths that are contaminated with blood or pus or any other kind of body fluids and then bandages, swabs, dressing and all other stuff that has to be disposed in a yellow bag and also apart from this there is something called cytotoxic drugs which are like expired drugs or discarded drugs so these all have to be disposed in a yellow bag and also animal and chemical waste animal waste are generally from uh, clinical trials or research centers so that animal uh, waste has to be disposed in a yellow color bag and then this has to be treated before any kind of disposals. Treatments like incineration, which is burning at high, very high temperatures, and then we have deep burials and also plasma pyrolysis. The other one is red color bag. So basically anything with plastic, rubber and tube can be disposed in red color bag. Like uh, you may take catheters or gloves, syringes, tubes and even drip sets has to be uh, disposed in a red color bag. So coming to the treatment of this red bag, we cannot burn them or we cannot bury them since this contains plastic materials and it causes a huge trouble to the environment. All we can do is, we can either autoclave, we can microwave, we can uh, give chemical treatment to them and also send it back for recycling. And then we have blue bag. Any glass items uh, like test tubes or uh, slides, vials, ampules has to be disposed in a blue color bag. This can be treated by autoclaving or microwaving and chemical disinfection. And we have this white bag to dispose any sharp objects or metal objects like uh, needles, scalpels and, and have to be treated by autoclaving or dry heat sterilization. The last bin, the black bin, we use for general hospital waste such as uh, paper waste or food waste and has to be decomposed in a secure landfill. Biomedical waste puts sanitation workers at a high risk of infections due to their long 
time of exposure to infectious substances and lack of protection gear. So segregating of biomedical waste using this color coding technique can actually help them to safeguard themselves. Surge in biomedical waste raises a fresh challenge to the world fighting against coronavirus. Before COVID-19, average biomedical waste produced by a hospital bed was around 500 grams. Right now, it is 2.5 to 4 kgs, which means a large hospital, a large COVID-19 hospital can produce 1800 to 2200 kilos of biomedical waste per day. With so many disposable items being used by hospitals or say isolation centers or quarantine centers, plastic pollution is getting worse. I'm saying plastic pollution because what do you think COVID-19 disposables are made of? So you can take a PPE kit which is basically made up of polypropylene, a thermoplastic polymer. And then you can take a glands on gloves which is made up of nitrile, polyurethane, PVC or latex. Latex is a natural rubber. And then here comes the test kits which are made up of medical grade plastics. And then mask, the inoke to the mask here we put is made up of polypropylene, polyurethane or polyisopropene. And then we have face shields which are made up of polycarbonate and cellulose acetate. And then IV tubing and bags which are made up of polyurethane, PVC, silicon and polyethylene which is polythene. And remember most of these plastics are non-biodegradable. So can I call this a pandemic of plastic or plastic pollution? So my friends, that's a surge in biomedical waste during COVID-19. And hope you all understood from the basics of biomedical waste. And if you feel this video quite informative, please give it a big thumbs up. Also, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. Bye-bye. See you all in my next video.